Welcome to TransLogic. I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. Today we're back at Coda, America's home for Formula One. Except today, we're covering Formula Sun. It's an exciting three-day endurance race featuring solar-powered cars entered from colleges all across the world. And it's a lot more technical and interesting than you might expect. Let's hear it for solar! <laughs> Formula Sun is a every other year event. Vehicles race about three days and they have, you know, set periods of time in which they can race. They just see who can go the furthest, the fastest. Right, right. 100% of their energy from the start of race time has to come from the sun. Copy, copy. 932 yeah, watts. Yeah, so it's 932 watts uh, or just about a kilowatt uh, of power. From one lap that they no, got? No, that's were... from, uh, that's from the sun instantaneously. instantaneously. Whoa, okay. You want to make sure you know how much power you're going to have at the end of the day, so we have to really keep track uh, how much we're going to have after day one, so yeah. we can anticipate how much we're going to use day two and three, so we end right at zero and not any sooner. What's it like in there? Hot. Yes. But it's really fun. It's actually it's pretty nice in there. Really? We have a little fan, there's some breeze. We have a masseuse coming, oh, so don't perfect. leave too I'll come back for that. And how long did you drive? A couple hours? Uh, two hours. Four hours in right, there. Right, right. So the track here is great. I think, I think it's the best one I've driven on. How do you plan for turn one? I mean, that thing's a wall of concrete and you guys are running Done off it. of a battery. Yeah? Is Done that the, yeah. as fast as you yeah, can? Yeah, when we started, I just told my driver to hit it as hard as he could. The big thing with solar car races is just the consistency. If you can stay on the track all day, yep. all three days, you know, you should do pretty well. That's it. As you can see, there's a lot of action going on. People are sliding underneath. Every second counts out here. Three, two, one. In the rear. Old water bag coming out. New water bag in. We keep checking our tires fairly regularly okay. just because we're not really sure the conditions of the track. Got it. He's out. now. How important is having a good tire out here? If we have a flat tire on the track, that could cost us upwards of 15 minutes to yep. get out there and make the fix on the fly. So, yep. we're ready to make it. Nice little move here on the double wrench. Aluminum hub for weight. If found, Paul, the college. Now that they've taken off the cover, you can see the undergirdings of kind of everything that's in there. All the battery management systems, the batteries themselves, high voltage on a piece of masking tape. <laughs> that's just kind of how this is. The biggest surprise, something that we didn't really know about, is how much stuff seems to go wrong for apparently no reason. In theory, everything should work fine, and then in practice, you know, it's a little bit different. We have a digital system, yeah. so it's um, yeah. it's like a lot more difficult to maneuver. Yeah. Like, there's other people don't have digital. No. Oh. Yeah. We have order of inspections that we do: electrical, body and sizing, array, you know, dynamics, which consists of a figure eight, you know, braking and, and a slalom. We passed all that yesterday, and today we actually have to try out the drivers. You want to make sure that you break in 2.5 seconds or 10% of the speed. We use carbon fiber on everything but the top of the wing. We use Kevlar so it's not conductive. If this car we want it to have as flat as an array because what happens is you want to have the rays in a perpendicular. Okay. So if you have curves, which you will see in other cars, yeah, yeah. they kind of have a disadvantage because if you have a cell that's running at 17%, your whole array is running at 17% efficiency. Really? So you're... Even though these cells are 22, 24% efficient. You're only as strong as your weakest link. Yes. This is the first time you guys are entering this. Yeah. So what led to that? Uh, what started that? Honestly, a lot of nerds. You put them in a room and they try to build a solar farm. <laughs> you know, that's just uh, that's great. How we, how we tend to do.
So tell me about kind of the competition between teams. It looks like everyone's kind of cheering for each other, actually. Yeah, I mean, everybody wants everybody to do well. We all know how much work has gone into making one of these cars. I mean, it's taken us two years or more that we've been working on this car. Everybody going for one goal. Yeah, so I mean, there's competition out here. We want to be the fastest, but yeah. we want everyone to do well. Is this the future? Solar is not the only answer, but right. it'll definitely be one of them, a very large one. And uh, as long as technology keeps improving, this will get better and better. I am interested in renewable energies. That's kind of where I want to take this when I graduate. I figured what better place to learn than what you would call the bleeding edge of car technology. All right, so that's it for our time with Formula Sun. Now, I'll admit, we thought today was going to be kind of a slow day. But the truth is, it was quite exciting. All the people in the pits, all the issues with electrical and tires and driver changes, and it really highlights the complexity of solar energy. It's also exciting to think of these college kids solving problems with their homegrown solar cars on an F1 track. All right, for TransLogic, I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. See you next time.